Hello fellow Fremonters, I'm Jared Fisher and our reading today is the last chapter of Mark's Gospel. Uh, this chapter is, it's the exception that proves the rule. Uh, in my Bible, and probably in yours too, this chapter has uh, 20 verses, but the last half, uh, verses 19 or 9 through 20, um, they're bracketed and there's a note that kind of implies that those verses uh, at the end may not be original. Uh, I read a couple of articles about this, one published by uh, the Bible Project, the other by the Gospel Coalition, uh, and the punchline of those was that um, while the whole chapter has been uh, a traditional part of, of the Gospel for most of the history of the Church, the nearly unanimous consensus of, of scholars of biblical manuscripts these days is that uh, that last half, uh, starting with verse 9 through, uh, through 20, it's, it was a later edition. It was kind of a well-meaning attempt by early Christians to, to fix uh, the end of the gospel and to align it better with um, the endings to uh, Matthew and to Luke. Uh, the author of one article I read said, I don't own uh, a single commentary written in the last hundred years that argues in favor of the longer ending of Mark's gospel. Um, the good news is that we do not see these sorts of brackets and notes about manuscripts all throughout our Bible. Uh, there's a lot of scrutiny uh, with people um, who are very smart and have a spectrum of motives. Uh, and my understanding um, is that the Bible that our translations work from, um, it's remarkably well attested and it's trustworthy. Uh, and like I said, this chapter is uh, the exception that proves the rule. Um, so if the original work ends in verse 8, what are we left with? The tomb is empty, uh, but there's no encounter with the risen Jesus. There's just an unnamed man talking about him. Instead of the Great Commission, this gospel ends with three women afraid and running away. What is Mark up to here? A thousand years before this empty tomb, Israel's neighbors, they worshipped at temples with a, a carved image of their God as the centerpiece of their worship experience. Um, but the holiest heart of Israel's temple, though, was empty space. Um, past the holy place, past the curtain that we saw in, la in yesterday's reading, uh, into a room uh, called the Most Holy Place, was a box uh, holding symbols of Yahweh's commitment to this particular people. Um, and on top of the box were some golden sculptures of two winged heavenly creatures facing each other. And between these cherubim was not a sculpture of God, but empty space. Uh, and this was not space that represented something. The God who has taken hold of you and of me was actually and uniquely there in that empty space. Uh, take a look at Exodus chapter 25, verse 22. So here in today's abrupt ending of Mark, we have two forms of empty space. First, we see the empty tomb. But the tomb is not a temple. Uh, we don't find the presence of Jesus hovering in the tomb to be worshipped. The other form of empty space is in the form of uh, the narrative. He has risen, but we don't see him. Uh, we don't see him reconnecting with his followers. Mark begins his gospel in chapter 1 saying, this is the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ. Um, but there's no ending here, no tidy ending, no resolved plot. Um, instead, it ends with a pregnant pause uh, right before the new creation begins in the redeemed people of God. And the effect of this ending uh, is to pull you and I and our, our current community of faith into the narrative as we ask, now what? Um, these women hand you and I the baton. He's going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him. The gospel about Jesus Christ continues as we find him where we live. Not the idea of him, but Jesus himself. 
um, present, with intent, with wisdom, and with power. Uh, just like he said, the time has come and the kingdom of God is near. Thank you.